Hi, Jared Bruton here. I'm explaining my light and pressure sensor that I made. So what it is, this is a combined light and pressure sensor. So it goes down in the water, it measures pressure so that it can tell depth, and then it also measures light penetration. There's a lot of things this could be used for, including research. But here's a short explanation of how it works. So we've got a pressure transducer. That's what's measuring my pressure. It's mounted here. Uh, you can see that it actually comes to the outside of the box. That's how it measures the water. We've got a photoresistor, um, which is what measures the light penetration. And both of those, the pressure transducer and the photoresistor, are wired to a data logger to record the output um, that changes. And it's all powered by a uh, battery pack that's got some AA batteries in it. So all of that, put it inside a waterproof container, and now I can measure pressure and light underwater. The pressure transducer works using capacitance. So there's two plates inside it. And as water pressure comes in, you can imagine that the plates get pushed closer together. As they get closer together, the uh, capacitance changes. So they're coming in, coming out. Capacitance will change, which leads to a voltage change, which is then output and measured. So that's how the pressure transducer works. A photoresistor is very similar to a regular resistor, except the resistance changes as light changes. So as more light comes into the photoresistor, its resistance decreases. Now, when that happens, that also means the voltage decreases. So when you put another resistor that's a fixed resistance, right after that, the voltage will have to increase on the fixed one when the voltage decreases on the varying photoresistor. So that change in voltage across the second one is how we measure the different light that is coming into the photoresistor. So in order to drill our hole for our, our pressure transducer, it's pretty easy. All we've got to do is take this box, mount it in a vise so it's vertical, and then use a drill or a drill press to come down and with a um, drill, put a small hole, get a slightly larger drill bit, larger hole, larger hole, larger hole, until we get one that's big enough for the pressure transducer to thread into. So first you have to drill the hole, get it the right size, just barely bigger. And then I started by hand and had to use a vice grip to actually thread my own hole using the uh, pressure sensor. It's got a thread on the end of it. So you can see that there's a minimal clearance. Um, it's nowhere near the water seal. You gotta make sure that's the case, because otherwise you'll leak. So let's see what happens. Someone with dry hands. Check the paper. There's water on the outside of the container. Inside looks completely dry. So the way the circuit is set up is displayed in the uh, picture. What we've got on the left side is a voltage in. That's our power source. So in this case, it's a battery pack with three AA batteries in it. Now, what we've got on the right side is we have two different elements in parallel with each other. One is the pressure sensor. You can see that right in the middle. So the voltage comes across the pressure sensor. Um, and then the other one is the photoresistor and fixed resistor on the far right side. So as the voltage comes across both of those, you can see the, the blue and then orange and then also the orange wires. Those are the, uh, the voltages we're measuring. One is the pressure sensor and one is the photoresistor. Those voltages are output to the data logger, which is then referenced back to the negative side of the battery. That makes it so that the, uh, the voltages are referenced correctly and are the right amount. Here's how I soldered the back of the circuit board that you saw in the previous diagram. After I soldered it, I checked to make sure that all the connections were good by using a digital multimeter on all the soldered connections. 
Now that we have our pressure transducer inside our waterproof box and waterproofed, we just need to hook everything up. We also need to make sure that our circuit board is completely finished and working, which I have, I have done, I have checked that it works. And then it's a matter of just hooking everything up. So you can see I've got my, uh, my cable leads from my pressure transducer, I hook that up. So those go into my, uh, into my circuit board. I'm just gonna kind of maneuver these until they fit inside the box. This is my battery pack. That's a nice place to put it. And then I just need to hook up my data logger. So that's the case. Um, one wire goes to this ground, ground portion. Then I'm measuring on channels five and one. So that's the wire from my pressure transducer. And this is the wire from my photoresistor. Once I've got those all set up, I just need to make sure that this is all, all down. I've actually utilized some of uh, man's best friend duct tape to hold this in place so that the photoresistor is in a, a spot where light can come through. And then it's just a matter of making sure all my cables are down and everything is inside so that my box can seal and is waterproofed. So now that I've got my circuit board soldered together, um, I'm testing it to see if it works. I've got my power supply on, I've got my pressure and my light. So I'm going to show first of all uh, the pressure. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna blow on this. So as you can see it's definitely responding to a pressure change of the voltage output. Uh, to finish my checking of this, we're gonna move a light closer and farther away. You can see there's a lot of noise, um, a wide range, but it is responding to uh, lights closer, lights farther away. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy your light and pressure sensor if you choose to build one. Feel free to email me with any questions and go America.